All right, guys, welcome back into the show. We go baseball podcast. Uh, today's episode is a uh, a Red Sox pitcher by the name of Shea Sprague. Uh, Shea was a draft pick in this past draft in 2024 out of the University of North Carolina and also Elon University before that. Got to shout them out as well. Um, and he's also uh, two things. One, Massachusetts native. So that's right up our alley. And uh, two, uh, probably the biggest Drake May fan in the state of Mass just because of your college ties. I would assume that that's an accurate thing to say. Do you think you're probably one of the biggest Drake May guys in New England? Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely pushing him to be the next franchise quarterback of the uh, New England Patriots pretty hard. And uh, been a lot of questions around the draft uh, that came my way, and he checks out, and Patriots are in good hands for sure. Okay, I got w- one follow up football question before we get into uh, some other things, but um, I I read an article today. Um, I I think it was uh, Dan or Vals or. I, I can't even say his name, but he's uh, one of the NFL Network guys. He used to play quarterback for the Bears uh, previously. He was like a backup to Cutler for years. But he was kind of one of those talking heads, and him and RG3 were like had some things. They're like, hey, Drake May ceiling is Mason Rudolph, and but he's not as good of a passer and all this stuff. And then the one guy said, he's literally just going to be Mitch Trubisky. Um, is there any hope for Patriots fans for the next like five, ten years? Yeah, I, I don't think – I think we have a good foundation with Drake – and I mean, obviously, this weekend he got a concussion. I think the first order of business should be getting getting some good offensive linemen in this draft, just to protect him. And then you can add some weapons around him. The defense is still in question. Um, I know there's a lot of questions surrounding Gerard Mayo and that whole hiring process recently, but I think there is there's a lot of hope, especially with Drake under center for the Patriots. All right. I mean, I like it because you obviously uh, got to watch him in person and school, which okay. I think is always uh, like for me. I know Chris is probably tired of hearing it. I'm, I'm a Mizzou guy. So uh, my college quarterback when I was there was Drew Locke. I think Drew Locke is probably the best quarterback in the league that's never gotten a chance. Um, so I'll always sing his praises. I don't care if he's a backup for the next 10 years. I'm still going to sing his praises. So I do like hearing uh, a perspective like that. All totally. right, Shay. I will get into uh, probably why people are here. Um, I mean, obviously, a lot of Patriots fans will probably listen to this, but um, how has your life been? I know uh, it's got to be interesting. Uh, I I know it's probably a cliche and probably a layup, but I'll I'll start you with this. I know your life has changed a lot since the draft this past year, and uh, I've I've read some articles that you did um, that you were kind of saying, obviously, it's my childhood team. It's a dream come true type thing, Um, but... What has life been like, I guess, since being uh, drafted to Pro Bowl? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, obviously, like you said, it's such a layup that it is a dream come true. Um, but it's it's pretty laid back day to day wise. I mean, um, like I said, told you guys earlier, um, we're down here in Fort Myers. A uh, bunch of prospects down here, like probably 50 of us. Um, we're just working out. Um Lifting weights, throwing plyos, doing all of our mound work, guys hitting in the cages, all that fun stuff. And then in the afternoon, we usually just golf. So it's really, really not a bad lifestyle or way of life. Um, very laid back, stress free. So it's uh, very enjoyable. Don't have to worry about the, uh, the homework at UNC uh, right now. At some point down the road, we will. But not at, as we speak, no, no worrying about economics don't work or anything i think it was uh it, it stuck out to us last year because you know we were doing this podcast last year with a lot of the the 2023 draft draft class and something that stuck out to me is like how close that group got so quickly and obviously like you probably for the most part had never met any of the other draft class until you get down to fort myers and you're in the the hotels or whatever and you meet them out in the hallways or whatever it is and you're just like oh okay like this is you this is me like we're now all on this team together um what has that been like i guess for you just being around like all these guys and now like getting so close or how has that process been for you guys it's been a lot of fun and it's been really cool too um i know for i live right now on airbnb with four other guys and 
we have what Oregon, California, Oklahoma, Georgia, and Massachusetts live here. Um, so I mean, all getting to know all these guys and everyone else too. Uh, it's been awesome, especially. I mean, I, I don't think I played against Braden. I think I played against Will Turner in the Cape. Um, watched Neely throw a ton for Florida. Um, Peyton Tolley, obviously one of my roommates, threw a lot. Uh, Devin from Vanderbilt. I mean, it's just really cool running into guys that we've probably played when we were younger. I know me and D'Angelo have talked before, and we we played each other in basketball and baseball growing up in Massachusetts um, when we were really young. But, uh, yeah, it's really cool just getting to put a, a face to the name and then obviously, like, just meeting them and seeing what they're all about um, after watching them from afar throughout a college baseball season or whatnot, uh, travel ball in high school and all that. But, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of great guys. And uh, like you said, with the 23 draft class, our, our draft classes were pretty close to. We, we golf all the time. Um, a bunch of them play video games together. Not a huge video game guy, but they're always grinding on the game. So it's been uh, really cool to get to know all these guys. Yeah, I was. Uh, I feel like golf is kind of a uh... – it's a hot topic and I'll, I'll, I'm going to get into that in a little bit too, because um, you know, me and Chris have been around uh, the team in, in Worcester so much the past couple of years. And I feel like every single time we were in the clubhouse for the most part, there was always a set of golf clubs in there. Um, I feel like uh, our guy Chase Sugar always had some clubs by his locker or whoever it was. They were just, I mean, they, those guys were golfing every weekend or whenever they would uh, on that Monday off day and the minors, like you get that day. And I feel like every single time I would see an Instagram story of somebody on the team uh, golfing. So uh, I definitely, I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Um, so now that you're officially a member of pro ball, and I know that you haven't officially gotten your start with uh, affiliate ball, like didn't haven't, didn't get to Salem or, or Greenville or anything this past year, but um, what kind of things are you looking forward to, uh, as in regards to the lifestyle or just like the change of pace that, uh, that you experienced in college? Um, I think, I think the, the best thing or the coolest thing about pro ball is just like how much time you're going to spend together. And obviously, obviously I've heard stories of the long bus rides and everything, uh, and like how, how that can get old from time to time. But I think, a lot of my enjoyment in the game of baseball comes through just like the camaraderie and like being around different guys and like meeting different guys and like all that, that really makes the game enjoyable outside of just like the execution and trying to get better every day with your, in regards to your skills to the game. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy the getting to know guys aside from, just like being in the dugout and being on the field. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, meeting new people, making more memories and being obviously, I know a lot of the affiliates are not in random places, but some places that are a little bit off the, the beaten path. Um, so I think it's going to be cool to kind of see those new places and uh, do some traveling up the East Coast. Chris, I feel like I'm, I'm hogging the mic from you if you if you have stuff. No, I was, uh, I would say kind of, you know, jumping into, cause you're obviously working down in Fort Myers, uh, for, for people who aren't familiar with you, um, talk a little about, you know, your style on the mound. Like, what do you offer when you're on the, when you're on the bump? Like, what can people expect out of you, your mentality as a starting pitcher to, you know, and, uh, go from there. Yeah. I think the biggest thing with me as a pitcher is I'm just going to come right at you. Um, I think my biggest strength is for the most part, I'm always going to be in the strike zone um, with a fastball change up uh, slider. Um, and obviously I'm the biggest thing for me when I'm on the mound is I'm, I'm not going to beat myself. Like you're going to have to beat me. And I've been taught that from a, from a pretty young age. And then obviously you get to college and, the, the style of baseball you play in college is a little bit different um, than professional baseball. It's it's more like if you throw strikes, you're going to pitch. Um, and no matter the velocity and all that, 
fun stuff. But I think that's just playing college baseball is really like drill that into me in a way. It's like just like be in the strike zone, go right at guys with your stuff. And even if you throw it down the middle, I mean, if your stuff's good enough, it won't get hit. Um, so that's kind of how I would describe myself as a pitcher. When you were when you were in school, what was um, was analytics a big part? Because the Red Sox are a very analytically focused organization. Was it a was it you know a practice that you had when you were in UNC? Is it going to be a transition for you to kind of jump into that style as well with the Sox? Um, and when I was at Elon, we didn't really have the resources, um, obviously like the Red Sox do. Um, when we were at UNC, we had um, some really good resources. Um, and we use them. We we definitely use them. Um, and you can you can use them in a variety of ways, like the track man and the hydrotronic cameras, the force plate mounds, all that fun stuff. Um, but like I said earlier, it's college baseball is just like you're trying to get outs on that given day. If you're in the spring, like if you're playing for UNC, you're trying to win a national championship, get outs that day. Whereas pro ball is more of like a a long-term process um, and all that. So I think the whole technology and and resources is going to be a little bit of a change just because I think the style of pitching and teaching changes a little bit. Um, but I've definitely had some some good exposure to that uh, at UNC. And our pitching coaches at UNC had um, experience in pro ball, so they know how it works too and um, – what kind of helps us and all that. So there definitely will be um, a little bit of, I don't think growing pains is the right term, but a transition to the different style of pitching and how to use a track man to tighten up a gyro slider as opposed to sweeping slider and all that stuff. This might be uh you can, you can use the, that previous answer as your current, as the answer to this question but um, it could be analytics or whatever uh, for this answer. But what what was one of the a couple things maybe that day one or first week or two or whatever down once you got to Fort Myers that took you by surprise a little bit? Like, oh, wow, like they really care about this and I had never really thought about this. Or um, it, what was there anything to you that was kind of like, OK, like this is uh, a lot different and like something I got to get used to? Um, yeah, I think, I think the analytics part, like, like my last answer was probably, is probably the biggest adjustment, um, from like, just from, we had our onboarding meetings and them explaining like, uh, like X Riviera, like your weighted run value, ERA, all that stuff and expected all, all your expected stats, um, based off of like exit velocities, launch angles and all that, that was like, that was all new to me. And then obviously like the velocity, they pushed velocity a lot more, but that didn't really surprise me. I think the biggest thing that surprised me was just like the physicality of the, our, the guys they drafted in our draft class. I showed up late. Big boys. Cause my, my flight down to Fort Myers was uh, supposed to, we were all supposed to go down on Sunday. I got, it was something went down with Microsoft that week. So my flight oh, got, I, I remember that. Fully. Oh. I was supposed to go to Denver. I oh, did yeah. go to Denver. I got to, so I live in like Southeastern Mass. Mm -hmm. so I was going to fly out of uh, TF Green. We got there at 430. I didn't get to the Delta counter until 830. Yep. Then I had to try I to live. cancel the flights coming back from Denver to American Airlines, which I thought I was going to into a fist fight with the, with the person on the other <laughs> side because they were just not good. They weren't going to offer a refund. I ended up getting the money back. Um, that to drive all the way to Logan. All that we were supposed to get there at like one o'clock in the afternoon. We ended up getting there at nine thirty. We bought tickets to a concert at Red Rock that we only caught thirty minutes of that show. So the first day was a shit show. So I can only imagine. Oh, I can only imagine what. Like. Yeah, your story definitely beats mine. But I got to the gate at RDU at like six a.m. and we're boarding at six twenty. And it's like 6.15. I'm supposed to get on this flight. And I was going to Atlanta, then Atlanta to Fort Myers. And I was getting on the uh, – I was getting on a flight to Atlanta. And our scout calls me. He's like, don't get on that plane. Like, I don't want to have you stuck in Atlanta. <laughs> so I just stayed in Fort Myers – or, uh, sorry, Raleigh for a couple of days. 
And then, um, yeah, but like I said, when I came down on Wednesday, I, I walked in late to a meeting and like everyone was sitting down. So I was, of course, I, I'm like the guy who's late to class. I'm like, oh, like whatever. And they're like, oh, shit, you can sit down. So I'd sat down. But everyone was already sitting and then we stood up to get out. And I was like, whoa, like I'm six foot three. And I was like, whoa, like we had Peyton six, six, Steve Brooks, six, five, Griffin, six, six. I was like, we have some monsters in here. That was probably the biggest thing that surprised was just the size of everyone when I first showed up. Yeah, I another funny. Well, so last year um, the, in the 2023 class, they drafted two guys back to back, Trenner O'Donnell and Blake Weehunt. And mm-hmm. I just met Blake Weehunt in person for the first time in Portland when he got called up. And I'm sitting in the dugout next to him. You know, I was already sitting. I'm like, and he comes up and he kind of sits by me. So I'm like, okay, like, you know, not too bad. Like, you know, he's a little taller, but nothing crazy. Uh, we we were sitting on top of the dugout. So then we we step down and I like go to shake his hand. And I'm like, holy cow, this dude is six <laughs> foot eight is yeah, what they drafted huge. last year. And then so I saw all the guys they drafted this year. Like you said, like Peyton Tolley, like six, six. You got even like guys like you know brand brandon clark 64 220 like, you know oh, uh blake 64 it's like devin 65 it's like you got all these guys you're no slouch either 63 so um it's Compared definitely them, though, i'm like the freaking point guard of the team like <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a good point um <laughs> no but it is interesting to like kind of think about it it's just like the their shift in uh i guess what they target now is a lot of size and a lot of uh traits like that that i guess you can't really teach Right. No, that, that's definitely been a change for them, you know, especially with, I think, with Devin Pearson kind of running the draft. It's been a lot different under him than it has been with others in years past. While you've been down at Fort Myers, has there been any pitcher that has jumped out at you that is kind of that you're just you like that guy, you know, just kind of puts you in like awe when you watch them, either like put in the work, whether it's in the lock, uh, weight room, whether it's on the field, whichever. Uh, I think Brandon Clark is a monster. He's, I mean, I remember we were throwing our first bullpens here, and this was back in July, and, I mean, I I don't even think I hit 90. I was like 88, 87. They, like, touched it. And Brandon Clark steps on the mound, and the first fastball, it throws 98.4. And I was like, whoa, whoa. I was like, this is a different beast. (laughs) Like, I was like, wow. And then in the weight room, um, him and him and Tolly are kind of partners and the lift weights together and they're just two monsters is I think is a good word to describe it. They're they're beasts. So I think BC Brandon Clark is definitely he's really jumped out to me where it's like, wow, he is and just goes about his business the right way too. I mean, very humble, um, works hard, does all the right things. And so we we've uh, we've actually had on this past year uh, Alex Bouchard and uh, Calvin Bickerstaff from your draft class, which two great guys. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, Alex had a little interesting situation because you know he's in the hurt squad, or I forgot what he what he called it. Um, but I know that there either is a lefty down there right now um, that's rehabbing, uh, or I don't know if he's still there right now. But a, a guy, Chris Murphy, who's also a left hander. Um, you also have guys like Taylor Broadway and, uh, you know, Wyatt Mills is down there for a little bit. You know, you have mm-hmm. some of those guys that have kind of been around for a little bit. Uh, they, you know, shown some flashes at higher levels and all that. So have you had a chance to like pick any brains of like any of the maybe the rehabbers or like even potentially your uh, draft mates, you know, that, you know, this guy throws something this way. You're like, huh, I wonder like if that would work for me, like if it's a arm slot thing or like if if it's a grip or whatever it is. Have you had a chance to do any of that? Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, right now, I think Cutter Crawford. Michael Fulmer, Whitlock, um, Winkowski. I probably just butchered his last name. Um, no, you nailed it. Uh, Chris Murphy's been down here a little bit too. Um, so they're they're around. Um, and it's, I mean, being a Red Sox fan, you obviously know all their names. And uh, it's kind of cool just like being in the weight room with them, watching them go about their business. Um, and they've all been really nice guys just talking to them. Mostly just small talk, but I think definitely picking each other's brains more so than the big leaguers. I mean, I don't really want to walk up to 
say Garrett Whitlock and just start rifling questions at him. But um, given the opportunity, yes, that would be cool. Um, but yeah, I think more so like when I'm playing catch with Neely or Devin or Peyton, like just like asking about a grip or like, I know uh, I've been playing catch with Neely and I just remember one day last week after a slider, I was like, so when you bring your slider back, you think in fastball, then slider, or are you just slider the entire time? Um, so it's just like small things like that, that you try and pick up on um, from each other, obviously. Um, but yeah, it is really cool to, to talk about um, what works for us, what might not work for us, because we have totally different deliveries and arm slots, like you said. Um, so I think that part's really fascinating, a lot of fun, kind of collaborating in a way, all trying to get better. I Neely's, guess, I guess. Uh, Neely's an interesting one that I just looking at like the draft class for you guys. And then obviously like with last year, some of the, you know, the stuff that I would try to like look at it content wise will be just because obviously people are hyper-focused on the pitching development, but Neely's one of those because he was a reliever and then the Red Sox are planning on maybe using him as a starter. And so it's kind of going to be interesting to see how that transition kind of goes. Um, so he's one of the guys that's on our, unofficial shortlist to maybe try to nab this off season to kind of chat with. So um, it is interesting to hear that, you, you know, you play catch with him and stuff like that, but he's one of the guys that I, I'm kind of intrigued about and in how to watch like his development, especially through next year and how he transitions from college into the pros and into potentially starting. Yeah, totally. I mean, he's probably I said last year, the past two years, college baseball, probably the best reliever in college baseball by far. Um, I feel like whenever I was watching a college base or watching Florida play, it's like, oh, you flip them on. It's the third inning. It's like, oh, Brandon Neely's on the mound. It's the ninth inning. Brandon Neely's on the mound, um, which is pretty funny. But, yeah, he's he's really good. His, his stuff's got life, too. Um, it's tough to catch and catch play, but that's for, that's for the better. <laughs> I always, uh, I always make a joke that the SEC guys, um, and I've tweeted this out a couple times, so I've been probably, I should probably uh, stop, but I, I have an SEC bias, um, and I'm always like, hey, if they draft an SEC guy, he's ready to go. Just but means more, right? I agree, though. I the <laughs> ACC needs some love, all right? Like ACC baseball. But we both had four in Omaha this year, so it's, I'd yeah. say they got the national champion, but we we were well represented in Omaha. ACC baseball is no joke. Um, obviously, Boston College here in uh, in Mass, everybody um, is very familiar now. But now that their football team's kind of good, I don't know. Um, all right, so um, I got a few questions left uh, before we wrap up, Chris. But um, I was thinking of something earlier when you were talking about, you know, you – we're talking about like, Hey, like I'm down here. You got like, you know, the guys like Whitlock and Cutter Crawford and all these guys. And you're just like, I'm, I'm a Red Sox fan. Cause I grew up, you know, that's like, you had like Red Sox jerseys in your closet. Like when you were going through middle school, high school, even post that. Still do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like, but now, now you have one though, with your last name on it. Right. Um, I, how how long did that take you when you first got down to the fort and just being like, okay, like I got to stop being a fanboy. Like it was pretty cool to like actually be on the other side of the lock, you know, being in the locker room where all these other guys have been before. How long did that take you to kind of overcome that? Um, I don't. I mean, I'm, it was probably. I don't even know if I'm like completely over it because like I know like. During the year, I was keeping up with the Red Sox, especially when we were down in uh, – we were in the hotel over the summer. And, like, I was just always watching the Red Sox games and all that um, just because I didn't have really much to do. Um, but, like, I also think there is, like, a level of, like, professionalism. Like, these guys yeah. – some of them have families, and it's, like, they're here to work. Like, it's not like us, like, 22-year-olds kind of just, like, cracking around and, like – in the lunchroom or anything like they, they kind of have a diff, little bit different outlook, I guess. Um, so I think I've, I've definitely picked up on that, but I don't know if I'll ever like not be a fan. Um, like I know the other day I was talking to one of our trainers about Chris Hale. Like I was asking him, I was like, Oh, it's like, he a good guy. Cause I obviously grew up like he's the man. Um, and he had a great year this year after they traded him. Um, but I think, I don't know. I think, 
I'd say I walked the line of being a fan and having some professionalism pretty well. <laughs> That's fair. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, I had chat. Chris, it's going to make you feel old, but I just looked at, uh, at Shay's date of birth over there. Cause I was going to ask him a question about like a old Red Sox player, but, uh, Shay was born in 2003. Uh, <laughs> so it's literally one year before they won the world series. And oh, yeah. <laughs> obviously you're familiar with it, but I know you don't remember it. Um, I mean, I was only 10, um, at the time, but man, that made me feel old. But, um, <laughs> so a lot, I know you're a young guy, but you, you probably are, you have kept up with Red Sox history. Um, but every every year in spring training, uh, you're about to have your first professional spring, spring training here in a few months. Um, a lot of the older veterans come around. Obviously, like Ortiz is down there. Pedro's down there. You obviously have Veritech already down there. Like a lot of the guys that you probably grew up and knowing their names, obviously. Is there a, a guy or two that you're just like, I would love to meet this guy, like a former player that's like that you kind of like looked up to growing up? Um, I in 2018, and I was I was a huge fan of, of both Chris Sale and Nate Evaldi. Um, I think obviously two like completely different style of pitchers um, and all that. But from like a, a a pure like Red Sox like childhood all that um, guys like Dustin Pedroia, Kevin Euclid, Mike Lowell, all them like those are all just like socks through and through in my head. So I mean, I think it'd be really cool to talk to them and just like ask them about them their experiences and like how they like Boston and all that. What which World Series was the first one that you like truly remember? Was it thirteen? Thirteen, yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, Chris, old, just really old. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I got a couple more, but Chris, if you uh, have anything. I do. Um, I want to just jump back to college really quick. Um, what was it like to pitch against Tennessee in the College World Series? You struck out six and in four innings. What was that experience like? Yeah, that was really cool. Um Obviously, being in Omaha was like a dream come true. It's why I entered the portal while I went to UNC. Um, so be, being able to pitch in the College World Series was was awesome. Um, to pitch against Tennessee, more specifically, was, was pretty cool as well. I mean, my freshman year – I mean, they were just a power. My freshman year, um, they had, like, that greatest team of all time, Jordan Beck, Drew Gilbert, Ben Joyce, all of them, Dill Lander. Um and then the year before that, they made the Ronda College World Series again. Or for the first time, actually, because I guess they didn't in 22. Um, but then they had, like, Chase Burns from Wake, um, all them. So pitching against Tennessee was cool. They had a really good lineup. Um, I think most of their lineup probably got drafted. Um, but, yeah, they were they were beasts. They were, I was pitching well, too. It was Father's Day. Um I think I was perfect through three innings, and then the fourth inning went out and gave up the old three-run tank, but <laughs> it's part of it. Um, but, yeah, it was awesome. And they had a really good lineup, too, which made for a good challenge in national television. Who would um, who would you say in, while you pitched in, in college was uh, one of the tougher hitters that you faced while on the mound? Um, I think – my first or my second college start was against James Madison when they had uh, Chase DeLauder, who was with the Guardians organization. I think like he was like probably at the time like the most feared by or not like feared. Yes, I, I was honestly like, all right, I gotta kind of tiptoe around this guy. <laughs> um, it's fair. No, I'm not gonna act like I'm a hero or anything. Like when I was a freshman, he was a junior and he was the projected seventh overall, eighth overall pick. I was like, all right, well. This this is we're gonna see how this goes. Um, but aside from him this year, um, like probably Nick Kurtz. Nick Kurtz is really good. Christian Moore from Tennessee, really good. Um, and the ACC, there's usually like one or two guys every lineup that you're like, yeah, that kid's a that kid's a stud. Um, which is also really cool and presents a really good challenge. And my last one, have you got a chance to talk with uh, Brandon Montgomery uh, while he's down in with you guys down there? Yeah. 
he's like he's like locker locker two lockers next to me. We talk every morning, and we're kind of obviously on different schedules because um, he's got to do his rehab, and then he'll get in the cage. Or he just started throwing recently too. All right, I have some quick hitter questions uh, before we let you go. Um, it is non baseball related. Well, some of them are. Um, but just to get to know you a little bit off the field here, um, you said you were a big golfer. What's the uh, favorite club in the back? Right now, I'd say the driver. Um, I've lost, I mean, I, I've played with Peyton, me and Peyton play all the time. Um, I've lost feel for the long irons. So <laughs> it's, it's either miles. from, from right now, as we speak, it goes, my bag goes driver i can't hit a three wood for whatever reason i keep that one in the bag driver hybrid six iron the, the okay. four and five irons are gone i mean i can't hit them for whatever reason um i think i just because i try and hit them 250 yards every time and they go like 210 but <laughs> i just over swing but uh yeah i'd say the driver right now okay um let's say it's raining outside so you can't go golf and you said you weren't a video game guy. So what what do you like to do in your free time when you're away from the field? Um, usually just hang out. Um, I know that sounds like super cliche, but like Peyton will play video games. I'll just kind of sit there and chime in on him playing, whether it's the new Black Ops. I don't know who's playing it this, this afternoon. Or uh, like college football. Um, we'll, I'll play against college football on him. Um, that's really it. Watch Netflix, watch movies, watch YouTube. Pretty, pretty laid back, chill. Okay, so you you led me into the next one. I got you got two answers for me here. I need your favorite TV show of all time and your favorite movie of all time. All right, uh, we were talking about this earlier. My favorite TV show is Entourage, and my favorite movie is The Departed. Uh, I'm proud of him. That's very, very Boston um, with uh, The Departed there. I think Boston aside, that movie is still incredible. I agree with you. Cast is <laughs> A++ cast. That's yeah, one of the most stacked casts I've seen in a yeah, while. Yeah, exactly. You can't miss. Okay. Um, this is going to be a random one, but if you... What, so I had this question asked me the other day, and I kind of want to ask you now. Um, let's just say that you can only have three sauces for the rest of your life and you have to like, they, they're dispensed out of your fingers. You can only have three. You can't have anything else. What sauces are they? That's a good question. Oh, I would say ranch. Like that's like, that's like a sauce, right? Or, or, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, ranch. Does gravy count as a sauce? See, that's, that's a tough one, man. That's like right on a line because it's like, like it's, it's kind of a be, topping, but I don't know. I think that's that's I think if when you ask more people this question, I, I would probably say that they're not going to mention gravy. So I think it's okay. unique. I think it should count. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna accept it. Um, all right, so gravy's on there for sure. Ranch gravy and we'll go Chick-fil-A sauce because I I found myself like public sells like the little bottles of it. I find myself just putting that on everything. <laughs> All right. So or, or when in doubt, it's just go to the Chick-fil-A sauce. <laughs> the big omissions on this, uh, this list are honey mustard and uh, barbecue sauce. You're just never going to have those ever again. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think gravy, those might be a little bit more versatile, but I think gravy, gravy really ties a lot of meals together in my book. Okay. Um, so I think I think that might be a little polarizing take, but it's fair. I'll, I'll stand by it. Um, I need a pre. What's a go-to pregame snack for you? I uh, just an uncrustable, probably. It's trending right now on Twitter. Uh, after seeing how many did you see that on Twitter? How many the NFL teams eat in a week? Yeah, it was well eighty thousand or something like that. The, the Ravens were eating like over a thousand just themselves. Yeah, I listened to uh, Barstool's part of my take, and they they did like a whole. They talked about it for like twenty minutes, and I think they're having like an uncrossable leading competition right now. 
<laughs> I didn't see that. They had a fridge full of grape ones. It's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There. okay. Um, if you had a uh, a walkout song um, for this next year, what would it be? Uh, mine's been Paradise City for the past couple of years, so I like that one. Okay. Uh, be careful how you answer this, but which which team do you dislike more? Is it the Yankees? <laughs> All right, fair. I was gonna say, is it a New York based team or is it Duke University? Oh, okay. I, I thought I thought you were gonna go Yankees Dodgers. Oh um, no 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 no! That should be obvious. I uh, no I uh, no the, the probably New York based teams. Okay. Watching I, I didn't watching know. the Celtics dismantle the Knicks, and then watching the Dodgers beat the Yankees twice. It was it was nice. It was, it was fun to watch. I agree. I didn't know if you just had like that deep hatred of Duke already. I I know you weren't at UNC for a long time, but still, it's like I I figured you probably went to Cameron Indoor and uh, or oh, wherever yeah. the game was, and you probably saw how crazy that was. Oh, it's incredible! It was so much fun. I mean, the one they played at home, I couldn't get a ticket to the game, but we all ran to Franklin Street after they won. It was it was so cool. But yes, yeah. I'm a big Carolina hoops guy, so. Okay. I'm very anti Duke. Okay. Um, Chris, did I miss any of my quick hitters before uh, we hop out of here? Uh, I'm going to say no because it seems like you're, you transitioned to a new set of questions. So I would say, well, yes, because there's other lines of questions that you would ask, but I think this is a new flow of questions. So I agree. I, uh, Shay, I'm, I'm just going to, before we uh, get out of here, I did have a question. I asked every single guest last year that I probably am going to retire. Um, and it's also like, you're a Massachusetts guy. You're not like a, a lot of the guys in the system are like Georgia and Texas and right. California. You know, a lot of those guys are, have a lot of chains around them. So I had like a thing where I'm like, okay, like I have a fast food fried chicken chain that I absolutely adore. And it's the best one that's ever been, established so like i know it's like a big in and out versus like whataburger thing for the texas cali guys in the system but i did fried chicken place and you obviously said chick-fil-a so i'm assuming yours is chick-fil-a um but i was always looking for zaxby's have you ever had it yeah i had zaxby's on saturday me and alex bouchard got it (laughs) all right well maybe i should keep asking i don't know which one would be your favorite i already kind of spilled the beans there but which one it would Um... if you had to pick all of them are available. Like you had Chick Fil A, Kane, Zaxby's, everything. Which one would you pick? I'd, I'd stick with Chick Fil A. Yeah, I figured. All uh-huh. right. We also that's like the only. I mean, we have we have some Popeyes, but that's like the only one up in the Northeast that's really popular. Ooh, Canes are starting to pop around. Dave's Hot Chicken, fantastic spot in Massachusetts. Um, they just opened one in Braintree. Um, that's really freaking. Oh really? Good. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. It's right by the mall. Um, shows you how much I've been home in the past year. Yeah, it's all good. Well, Shay, we uh we appreciate you hopping on. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, obviously, you haven't gotten into any games yet, but looking forward to you getting into uh, affiliate ball in 2025, and uh, definitely going to be looking out for you in spring training. So, Shay, thank you so much for hopping on. Thank you guys so much. It was a lot of fun. You.